Um, yeah. Oh. And this is the link back to the post on his side. He's got a short link. Is that a short link? No, it's not a short link. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought you had a different short short link. But anyway, he's got a, sh a short link back to the post on his side, um, so that he can say, "Here's here's where the the site itself is. Here's where the origin origin of this post is." Don't we don't always do that? Because if, if the post is short enough to be a tweet anyway, giving them a link that shows you the same thing can be a bit weird. But um, if it's a longer post with structure to it, or the, the tweet is just the, you know, the first 200 characters of it, it's, it's nice to have a link back to the, the site. Um, do you want to pop back? Ooh. That was the next thing. What was the next thing? Oh. Yeah. He posts photos on his own site, and again, sends a copy to Twitter. So there's the photos posted on his site, and there's the Twitter version. Um, go back. <laughs> Where we are now. Um, he's um, he's also been posting events. So we have a Humber website club um, every other week in lots of cities around the world. If you want to start one, talk to us. We'll talk into how to do it. It's basically, sorry, but we'll speak it's basically a, um, it's like the Homebrew Computing Club used to be. So you get together, you talk about what, you, what you've been working on that week in a circle like this, um, and then you break into conversations about things that sound interesting in that. So you, it's sort of a show and tell and then a conversation. So fairly, fairly low pressure, lasts an hour, hour and a half. We normally do them sort of straight after work in a, in a place where people work and, and gather in workplaces like that. So you've, you've got them in San Francisco, London, Brighton, Berlin. I don't know, just before I forget, there's, there's a long list. They, and they come and go as well, depending as we sometimes put one on if we're in, we're in town or things like that. But the idea is it's trying to get, create a regular meeting space for people in the real world in between the times we're, we're talking online. But yeah, so he's posting an event here. Oh, he's got an add to calendar button, which generates the, the ICS file that you can then um, put in a Google or Apple calendar or whatever. Um, you, you don't do replies there, do you? Um, just RSVPs. You, so you, do, you, do, you support RSVPs? Yeah. Do you show them? Uh, it was RSVP. This is pretty freshly posted. So. Okay. They were, they'd be down here. Like, well, I could post an RSVP, but... Well. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Does that RSVP that people send to you, they are sending it through web mention, right? Yep. Yes. Now, so, does so, that data go back into the ICS file as that thing does? It could do, but that's not, a, not at the moment. Actually, no, not currently. Because I'm just putting the RSVPs uh, in an iframe uh, and not like playing the tunnel. No, because I'm having problems writing these inside ICS2. Yeah. For some of the ICS is so many people. Yeah, like I, I wrote it from scratch many times. But like the calendar apps I'm using are not showing the attendees, even though my ICSs are validating everywhere. Okay. I hope you solve it, then I can copy it. Okay. <laughs> well, what I'm doing is I'm actually using a service. So this is the tweet copy uh, of it. Um, so every, like, I try to post a copy of everything to Twitter because mm -hmm. a lot of people follow there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in Twitter, you don't have as much space, so this is the mini mini version, uh -huh. right? But I add to calendar, it's something everyone does. And so I don't want to make people like, have to come to my site. Mm -hmm. If they say, oh yeah, I know what this is, I want to go. One click add to calendar. This is using a service called H2BX. Mm -hmm. So if you have an HTML page that has your event, marks up an H event, okay. it converts it to ICS for you. Okay. So all that logic, all that difficult programming on the service, to deal with ICS, all you have to do is publish an HTML page, which is so much easier. I pulled an all night duplicating that function. Yeah. 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 No, it's ICS is is um, a bit of a messy format, and it's a little varies between systems as well. So you you've got to do some work to try and make things that they're all happy with. Yeah. It's the code that powers HTML. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's open source. Yeah. It's on GitHub. Is it still so like XSLT or is it? <laughs> the <transforms>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's open source, but hard, hard to edit, is what I was saying. Yeah. I used to work with XSLT 
for a publisher. I still have nightmares. I can use your help. Yeah, let's work on it together. Okay, so back here, but go to the event again. Okay. And reload. Did you post an RSVP? I posted an RSVP. <laughs> I always be no because I'm not going to San Francisco, but <laughs> there you go, it works. <laughs> it works. So click on that. We may as well show the whole thing. Okay. I've seen that link through, right? Yeah. I think this Oh, it goes to me rather than the post? Yeah. Yeah. I'll trust your scripts, Kevin. Okay. No, this should be an HTML menu. Sorry. So we replied to the ten text post. No, but I do miss it. Um, and all I got was the no. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. So, so, but he rendered it as an X. Um, so this, the way this works, we, we can. Do, if you do, 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 interested, do you want to dig into it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to inspect that one because that's that's a nice my one because it's, it's quite small. So RCP is probably a good example as a. As a bug for what's markup thing, yeah? So if we view source on this, yeah, we'll just, we'll maybe just inspect that bit because the source is a bit scrappy. Is this close? Are we there yet? This is all deep in your CMS, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Eh. Which one are you looking for? I'm, I'm trying to find the H entry. Where's the H entry? Right here. Okay. So this is marked up with microformats. There's a bunch of markup nonsense in here um, that's designed for display. But the microformats defines certain prefixes and suffixes for classes to describe structured data. So we have H entry, which is a post. Um, we have an author, P author. Um, and then it has an H card, which means there's structure in here, which is the author icon. So it's my link, um, my um, which is, um, we have U logo, sorry, a new photo, which is me. And we've got U URL, which is my link. Um, then in here we have, I replied this to Tantec, U in reply to, ahref that one over there. Um, and then I have a P RSVP, an RSVP field that's value is no. And the comment looks like the comment is is not part of the RSVP. The comment is part of the post. It's part of the e-content. Yeah, e-content. Yeah. So, and then when the h entry element div here closes, that's the end of that structure. So you can parse that out with the microformats parsing library, which we've got in you know six programming languages, and they're all open source. Um, so you could you could look at it with unmung or whatever. Oh, microformats. That'll do it. You got the same URL? It came a bit, yeah, okay. So it's past that, it's got an H entry with an author in it. Um, the short value for that is Kevin Marks. It's an H card, which has a logo, photo, a name, and two URLs that happen to be the same. It's just weird markup on my CMS. It's in reply to Tantex thing here. Um, name is the, is the short version of the post data. Content is the HTML version of the post data. Um, it's got the RSVP, because that's a PR, the RSVP property. And then it's got the URL of the post and a published date. So we've parceled that out of the HTML and extracted it as JSON. Um, and then we can then, so basically Tantex site is doing that. Now what I do is I send a thing called a web mention which is basically a, a short protocol that says my URL here has linked to your URL there and I send that to Tantex site and then he fetches my URL, passes it out to get the reply, to get the reply and post the reply to the, the event that way. And we have mu similar markup for tweet-like replies, for likes um, and those kinds of things um, and we can add other post types as well. There's sort of a, a generic thing for, for posts and then there's photo posts event posts, replies, um, likes. There are others that I can't remember at the moment, but we'll come up with them later. But the basic model is, I have something on my site, you have something on your site, 
we link to each other, and then we use the, the structured data inside the post to say what that link actually means. If we don't have the structured data, you can still say, Kevin linked to me, but you don't know what the meaning is. If you want extra meaning, I can add it like this. And the protocol for defining these is called microformats, and basically it's little prefixes and then the name of the field. So H entry means, um, H means a, a structured piece, and then the P, P means it's t take the text of the element, um, U means takes the URL of the element, and we define that for the different kinds of elements that have URLs in. Um, and then E means take the HTML content of the element, so you can get markup in. And um, DT means take the data of the element, so you can get the structured data out. So the, those, I think that's all the types. Um, so we turn a simple set of types as prefixes, and then the field name as a suffix. And that way you can, you can create a, a nested structured object that you can pass back and forth. Jason. There's some slight um, JSON infelicities in that because you can put arbitrary numbers of these in, everything ends up inside a list, so we get, end up with lots of brackets and nested square brackets of things because potentially there could be lots of fo um, photos and there were two copies of the URL that were marked as URL and so on. But that, that, was, that was something we decided to do early on rather than saying it could be single or it could be multiple, we just made them always multiple so that you can, you can always dereference them. Yeah. So, so, but also, you know, we have no control left. Yeah. 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 People have. Yeah. Yes. We had. We, 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 it learned the idea that people have more than one name. That was a change from vcard three and four. Anyway, sorry. So we pop the stack a bit. Okay. We'll go back to Tantex thread, I think. Unless there's more questions about that. This, this is yeah. This is a good intro. Uh, yeah. So microformats.io will, will help you understand microformats. It's a it's a standards organization that we set up 2004. 2005. Five. Yeah. Yeah. 2005. And it supported all kinds of like Mastodon, Microsoft. Yeah. I I came here, right? 50% of my reason to be here is to question you guys. Okay. <laughs> we can uh, because like I'm really interested <laughs> in this and I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to monopolize things. Huh? All right. Well, we go to the next subject. Then. Okay, we'll go to the next subject rather than keep going in. We'll we'll pop back out again and yeah. get back to that because. And yeah, if anyone else wants to wants to ask us things at any level of this, please do. Okay, where have we got to calendar? Um, somebody was talking about decentralized Git and storing Git issues in Git, which is, sounds reasonable. Um, Tantex's version of that is he stores his issues on his own site and then shares them into GitHub. So, because GitHub has the same problem, it's a essentially own thing. I mean, so by Microsoft now, they've done a reasonable job of maintaining common, so we're probably okay, but yeah, it's still a bit, you know, it still could go away. They've deleted things before. So here he's written, um, this is part, Tentex's day job is web standards, so he's, he's writing about the consolidation of different kinds of web app manifests and things like that. Um, he wrote it on his site first, and like gathering stuff together. It's like, if you want to dig into standard stuff, he's a, he's a good blog to read. But you wrote it here, and then you've fed it into, where did, where's it going? where's the link? Yeah, fed it into GitHub, yeah. So there's the same post in, in, in GitHub. Do you, do you munge it into Markdown or just post the HTML? I use Pridgey, and it, it munges the Markdown for me. Oh, nice. Yeah, so all the links come across. Oh, you're using Aaron's original code. That's very cool. Like, if you look at it, those links, it's like everything is still linked. Right. Plus, this part is just Cool. So do you want to talk about Pridgey or? Yes. OK. So this. We've talked earlier about sharing posts out to Twitter as well. Now you can just do that by hand, copy and paste them. You can write your own tools to do that, like the one I was using to post tweets earlier on. But there's a site called Bridgey that's maintained by one of our community, Ryan, who's um, put a lot of time and effort into this. And basically, he's doing the work of dealing with all these silos for you. So you send it, you send it in micro formats and web mentions. He translates it into stuff that appears on those sites, um, and then he will turn the, the, the comments there back into mentions that go on the other post. Does that, that work for your GitHub ones, or? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, but basically, we, he's put it for these. He's deleted Facebook from it because Facebook has been less cooperative recently. Um, Instagram's looking shaky for similar reasons. They're throttling access a lot. But broadly, he uses their public APIs or scraping, whatever he can do to deal with it. Um, he's also, this, this is also, um, you can add a web mention endpoint to particular blogging silos as well, which is quite a neat trick. And basically, you sign into, you sign into your account on whatever this thing is. Um, and then it knows who you are, and it looks at your post there. Um, and then when you when you create a post, you put a special link in that says send this to this one, and it sends it out to that one. And then if it monitors the silos, so if someone replies there, it will make a web mention back to you. So we, we can probably it might be easier to do that with a tweet than a GitHub one maybe. But so yeah, sorry. So web mention was the was the spec I'd be talking about here. It's a very simple way to say I have linked to you. Um, it has two parameters, um, source and target. And it says source is my site, target is your site, I have linked to you. And you create an endpoint on your site that's discoverable in the headers um, that is the web mention endpoint and I post to that like a web form. So with, you know, with question mark equal stuff after it. Yeah. And similarly, we've, you know, Bridgie's one example of this. We've got a bunch of other tools for both receiving and sending web mentions that you can, you can dig out as well. There, okay, yeah. So spec.indiewebg.org is where we keep the standards, listings, the, the stuff we worked on. We talked about web mention. Um, we haven't talked about microformats in this because that's on a separate site mainly, but there's almost that. So do you want to go through these or not? There's a bunch of different ones. What we'll, we'll, we'll do is we'll do them in context when they make sense. Um, so, you want to go back to your post again? Or if, if you want to ask about them, do it, yeah. Keep going, one more. I want to go back to the tweet one that has a reply, if we can find one, the tweet one that has a reply. Oh, do, do you show the replies or not? Oh, you don't show the replies. Okay, never mind then. Don't, let's not do that. Okay. We can show that later with my set or something. Where are we? So, yeah, so that was the web mention link and the spec in the web was the list of specs. Okay. Um, we talked about marking up your site with microformats and we showed you some of the insides of that. And Webify Me is a, is a starting point for that. So it's basically a series of things you add to your site and it has tests for them where it will say, did you get that right or not? So if you put in my site, known.kevinmarks.com. Oh, I was going to do the known one, but you can do kevinmarks.com. How that work too? So first of all, you know, talk about well me's as well. Um, this is my site. It connects to a bunch of other sites that have a certain like string in common. Um, this is using the idea of rel equals me. So when you make a link, you can put rels on the link that says what the link means. It, it says, it's defining the relationship between the link. And rel equals me is one that we defined a while back that says that is also me. That, that page represents the same person or entity as this page does. So on my site, kevinmarks.com, I link out to Gmail and Known and my blogger blog and Flickr, Twitter, Google Plus, RIP, I should delete that one. Or put, put the link to archive maybe. I haven't uh, seen that in a while. GitHub, Huffduffer, Quitter, no, I think that's died as well. That's, a, that's an old <laughs> new social. That's a master instance, that's another master instance. And I said, oh, there's a DAT URL for the, for the <laughs> other decentralized people as well. Um, so that's a list of links on my site that link out to that. So that's basically saying these are me as well. Um, now to verify, you can just assert that, which is a bit tricky, but you can verify that by having a link back. So if we go through to GitHub, say, if you look on the link here, inspect that. Okay. That has rel equals me on it as well. It's got no follow me, which is a bit weird, but um, but it links back to me. So. Because both sites are the same rel me in both directions, that's verification that it is the same person. Um, some sites put these me's on by default. GitHub does it. Twitter does it, but only on the intent pages, which is kind of a pain. Um, WordPress can do it. 
there's, there's, there's ways of doing it. And then we have part of what the um, Bridges stuff sets up for the silos is me links that, 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 that do that for you as well. So this is a way of, of saying this is the same person in both places. Um, we also have ways of using that as a way to log in, which we could go into, but there's, the, there's basically the idea of roll me off that says, I will log in with my own domain name, but we will use my GitHub login because GitHub actually has authorization and my site doesn't. So I'm, I'm saying I'm happy to use their auth to represent that this is my site, but please use my site as the primary defini um, definition of me rather than GitHub. So that's a, that's a model that, that's a sort of microformats model we've had for a long time. The underlying standard for this is called XFN, XHTML Friends Network. There's a set of lots of different definitions of rel values for different kinds of relationships. There's you know, friend and met and those kinds of things. But the me is the one and we use most because identity consolidation is hard and you want a different, lot of different sets of identities that you can connect together. That's a, that's a very valuable thing. Okay, because it means you know, if one of them dies, I haven't lost everything. When my, when my Google Plus went, Google Plus, okay. <laughs> Google Plus used to be Google Profiles, which I helped build 10 years ago, 12 years ago, um, which had all this Realme stuff built in. And that was, that was actually a very good identity consolidation thing. But you, we'd have to go to archive.org to see it. Well, we can do that later maybe. Okay, so the next thing, so that's checking the Realme. So the next thing is you find, look for the H card. This is the expression of your authorship, your, your persona. Let's see, let's see what it might like. Yeah. It's got a photo, it's got my name, it's got the URL, it's got an email. It's telling me I should add a note, P note to it, which I could do. Um, that you can actually put more stuff in, you can put, you know, who you've worked for and lots of other URLs, things like that. Tantec's got a richer one if you look at his, but um, the, ba the basic idea is you, can, you, you create this as a representation of you and if other sites want to show you as a replier or something, they can fetch this, get your photo and your name and your URL. In that data, your messages usually live on the front page of your website. Um, you can, yes. You, yes, yeah. It's already there. We've, we, there's a thing called the authorship algorithm that lets you look for it in other places. But yeah, you, but you can also put it on each individual post. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, like yeah. There's a well-mentioned link deep into the site. Or? Yeah. So you saw on the post I had a. Um, a P author H card that says this post was written by this person. That, yeah. There, check the post. Okay. Do you want to do my post or your post? Oh, that's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So it's found that P author H card. Kevin Marks. It's a different URL because it's, it's the profile URL on that side. Um, in reply to, which is the in reply to field, content, this is the e-content, no, but I do miss it. Publish date, URL. And it's suggesting things you, I could add to this. I could link to the external copy, so like Tantex posts have that syndicated thing to say, here's the Twitter copy, here's the GitHub copy, or whatever. And you can put categories in, hashtags or whatever you want. It known, just known, let's, the, the content thing I'm using, I type hash and it put it in, it auto links them as well. I think yours does too, right? So if, if, we pass, if we pass your GitHub one, we'll get a bunch more structure here. Should we want to try that? Is that that one? No. no yeah. So yeah, so we've got the name, the author, in reply to the content. It's not showing as HTML actually, which is kind of a shame. Um, it's URL and the syndicated copy. Oh, we didn't find your hashtags, that's weird. Ah, okay, we've got a bug in this, this cause, yeah, we should have found them. Are you, you had you, you W3 tagger things with, with hashes? Oh, you, you, didn't, you didn't put them as categories? You didn't put, okay. So you get the idea. We've got, we've been doing this a while. We've got most of the common things you want to use in posts. We have debates about new ones every now and then, um, but we've got like audio, video, photos, some discussion about multi-photos and slideshows, things like that. But this, this, um, most of the kinds of posts you can do, we, we can do with this. And worst case, if we can stick HTML in, then you can do anything. Okay, back up to where were we? 
we're still in Indigo Road 5, is there, is there one more or is that enough? That's all, we're, that's all we need for Indigo Road 5, isn't it? Oh yeah, so the web mention thing. So um, this has, this will test sending web mentions from your site. So if you've, if you've, if you've marked it up, um, you've marked up the links to other sites, it will send a web mention for you so you don't have to have that built into your CMS. And we've got three or four tools that will do that as well. Um, and then, do we need all this reply context? That's the in reply to stuff. Um, and then there's more discussion about how to set up web mentions for your site. And there's, there's three or four services that will do it where you basically just um, put something ahead that says, here's my web mention URL um, and sign up for it and it will, it will receive them. Some of them need sign up, some of them don't. That's exactly what the, I'm interested in because I'm using I'm building lots of static generators. Yes. And this is, feels very dynamic. And I'm like, how can I build a static generator that can receive web mentions? Oh, well, we can, I can show you some of those. Um, well, KevinMarks.com is. So you go to KevinMarks.com. So this is a static site. Okay. Um, if you look at the head of it, you need, to, you need to trust it for the JavaScript to come in. Uh, yes. Um, if you but if you view source and look at the head, we have rel equals well equals web mention here, and that links out to web mention heroicapp.com, which is a, a web mention service that's built by Voxpelli, who's one of our community people. You so you can go there and sign up for that, or you can fork it and deploy it yourself on Heroku. Um, and then somewhere in here, down the bottom, there's some JavaScript that injects them with this link from his side. So if we, if we go back and scroll to the bottom, yeah, so there's, a, there's, there's the, um, the script that basically calls this site, um, fetches that stuff, and embeds it in. So, he, so he's storing the web mentions in the database on his site, generates some HTML, which I'm injecting into the page. And then so if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, because this is my manually edited homepage, so I don't actually have pagination. Um, you, you will see, so you can see some web mentions here. So these are likes. They've got a, um, a P like of in the link to me. So that, that's a like. That's a P repost of, which is a, which is a repost. Um, a lot of these will actually be bridgy ones that came from Twitter. So people will have linked to me from Twitter and responded to that. Um, and then I've got some you know, stuff that someone responded to my whole page and talked about that there. There's another reply here. Oh, that's, a, that's an app reply to my Twitter handle, which has been copied over here. So I probably need to moderate that out because he's having a row with me about Brexit, which is probably not something I want on my website, but there we go. Um, and you, because the URL, you can target the top level, so Bridgie will map at Kevin Marks on Twitter to a web mention to kevinmarks.com, so it'll come through that way. Um, and it's up to you how you display them. This is, you know, this is my weird CSS to put stars and recycle things on them instead of hearts and, and whatever. Oh. <laughs> you took away the thing I was pointing at. Anyway. You get, you get the basic idea. So we have services that will receive web mentions and that will give you something you can inject into your site. So there's um, webmentionheroicrap.com I mentioned. There's webmention.io um, that does that and it will generate some structured JavaScript for you to do that. And there's mention.tech, which is one I made that basically does the same thing, but since we web mentions. Um, it's fairly ugly. And there's some other, other scripts and tools that will Receive, we'll take the receive web mentions and format them for your site and do, do them in prettier ways. So you know, it's under your control, but it, it's there. Oh. Oh. Fill in your names here. <laughs> you do that later. Okay, where are we? That was the next one, yeah, okay. Okay, so chat. Chat.indieweb.org is our IndieWeb chat room. Um, now, being IndieWeb, um, it uses a bunch of IndieWeb standards as well. So each of these individual things are marked up as posts, the links are, you link off, and so on. Um, so if you, if you view source on that, or yeah, put it into IndieWebify, you'll see it.
Yeah, so template posting in the IRC, here's the content, there's the URL, there's the time, and there's the URL. Um, so, you know, we use our own stuff to build our own things, which is a good principle. Um, so this is the web version. There's some other clever bridging going on here that bridges out to IRC, Matrix, and Slack. And Discourse. And Discourse as well. Oh, we need to add a link for that, yeah. So um, those, that's two-way bridging. It's done with a variety of different things. Some is some special stuff that Aaron built with a bot, which goes to Slack, because that's a priority API. Um, the Matrix and IRC stuff is, is, is a bit more standard. Um, that's what Andre's suggested. Yeah. That was the suggestion that... Yeah. <laughs> you put it into the channel, now it's got a permalink, we can find it again. We could, we could send it web mentions if we want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's okay. the chat. Well, that's the chat. But if, you, if you've got other questions, go to chat.indiaweb.org, ask them there. There are people there, round the clock mainly. Because it gets a bit quiet. Um, when both Europe and America are asleep, but there are a few people in Asia and Australia as well. So there's usually someone there. Um, and there's sub-channels for um, more specialized things. But, so there's the main IndieWeb one. There's a dev one, which is for more codey questions. Um, Meta, it gathers links. Well, actually, Meta's interesting. So Meta gathers links from elsewhere and puts them in. So there's keyword searches on Twitter for um, Indie web and things like that, and, and yeah, other, uh, yeah, other places as well. So you, 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 this is basically our sensor network on the rest of the world. Oh yeah, and then we have a weekly newsletter that is compiled from the chat and the wiki. We didn't really mention the wiki yet, did we? But anyway, we'll get to that. So this gathers up all the different events and things like that. We'll we'll try and get a photo here and post that so that we can show up as well. Um, and it's, you can sign up for the newsletter and you'll get to know the upcoming events or you can just go and look at the wiki. And it shows wiki edits and things as well. Yeah, yeah so we can talk about the wiki a bit. So the, the indieweb.org is primarily a wiki. Um, and we use that as an information repository. It's, it's, it's good, good. Yeah. So the front page talks about IndieWeb, but basically you can add pages to talk about things. Other people edit them and add links to it as well. Um, so we've got the high-level stuff. Yeah. Using the stuff, Realme stuff we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Using the Realme stuff we used earlier, you signed to the wiki. Um, and there's, you know, it's, if you want to learn more about this, read there. Um, there's some subtleties about the wiki. You can actually edit the wiki from the chat. Um, so if someone says, what is that thing, it'll look on the wiki and if there's a page, it'll show you the summary. So if you said, what is web mention, it will say, web mention is a way for one site to link to another site. Here's the link to this, this, the description, click through to the wiki page, then the link to the spec and so on. Um, if you say, you know, what is Scuttlebutt, and we haven't defined it yet, um, you, can, you can then say Scuttlebutt is short description, and you create the wiki page. And there's, there's another macros for adding links to a page. You can do name of page, Two, left, um, two less thans, link and text, and it'll append it to the page. So there's, you know, there's sort of classic wiki gardening, but there's a lot of shortcut stuff that integrates it with the chat, which is it's a toolkit we've put up over the, over the years as a way of bringing the different strands of the community together. But, but what it means is if you go to the, the chat, there'll be someone in there all the time. It's, you know, it, it goes up to 100 and something, goes down to about 10, it varies, but this way we hang out, yeah. And, and so, and we talked about Homebrew Website Club. Indie web camps are, are, are bigger. It's like this kind of event with two days, usually over a weekend. Um, the first day is very much this format of open space. The second day is let's build something about what we talked about yesterday with demos at the end. Um, so we, we sort of open with here's here's our websites, here's what we've made. Open space. Um, day two, build things, talk about the things you built. And we'll be doing those for... The next one in Europe is in Berlin. Sorry. Yes, there's one in Berlin. When is it? So 23rd of um, November in Berlin. And there's one in... What's that? Oh, World Camp. Okay. Did you say there was an SF one as well?
Okay. And again, using our own stuff, eating our own cooking. Um, these events on the wiki are marked up with the H event stuff um, and the other stuff parses that out. So those structured pages you saw other elsewhere are parsing that other page, creating the event list, putting them into the newsletter and so on. So there's, it's taking a bunch of the, the structured data we've got and then using it to, to spread that around. And with some of the events we do um, RSVPs as well. What we, what we found is that for the big, so the, the home of cards will take indie RSVPs. You can, you can also RSVP on the wiki. Oh, yeah. Yep, H event, properties, and so on. Um, start time, end time. There's, there's more properties in events than there are in other things. And then these are people who are attending. So these are, the, they, they've come back as children, H card. They're not actually marked up as replies. Yeah, they're marked up as attendees. Yeah, they're marked up as attendees, right. Because you don't mark them up as RSVPs on the site that they, they've RSVP to, because the, the RSVP is somewhere else. <laughs> um, we also let people do it other ways as well, because not everyone who comes to the indie web thing has a, has a site set up to do this, so we'll let you do it on the wiki, or we'll do your sign-up tools and things as well to get to the numbers. But we've also we've done enough of these now. We've got like a, if you want to do one, we'll, we'll tell you how to do it. Um, book a space, get two people to work on it. Here's a bunch of things you need. Here's where you get stickers and t-shirts. And, you know. we, it's, the, it's the bar camp model. <laughs> like remapped a bit to, to fit this thing. Yeah. It's a bit too close to Thanksgiving, isn't it? It's the weekend before. It's the weekend before. So that one's going to oh. allow remote? We, we, normally do, we, normally, we often do remote, yeah. Okay. If, we, if we can, if the space will allow it. Yeah, yeah. We've got some community members who bring gear, like our friend here, to, to send it out to the web. And um, we'll often do um, some kind of chat back in. We've used three or four different ones. <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of options these days, which is good. And, and there's the, the, also the, 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 the chat channels will be taken over with it for that, that weekend as well. So you can dip it in and out that way and get a summary or go and read what people have said about it. So keep it away. Oh, yeah, stickers. Um, did you, well, well, do you want to go back to your post as a? Your outline again? This is good. I think is that everything. That's all I have. That's it. Okay. So, does it does that help? Is there, is there stuff you want to ask ask us about? What's? It's a much bigger thing than I realized. Like I thought it was just like set up a website, but well, you guys have made this much subtler. It's very interesting. Well, the point is, it's designed to. to be progressive. Yeah. Uh, IndieWebify is quite good at that. It says, okay, start with a website. Okay, where's your URL? Okay, link to your other places from that. Um, and that will give you the space to do more things. Each of these things is incremental. It's not a Model F. You don't have to do all these things. Yeah. You, you may not want to host events on your site. There's no reason to. Um, but if you're organizing events, that could be nice. So part of the point is all these are defined as independent pieces. There are some other pieces that we didn't talk about. Do you want to go back to the specs? We can, we can go through those as well. Because we have... Um, so I mentioned the microformat suffer structure and web mention for communicating between sites so that you can use that structure to interact with each other. Um, we've also got, um, let's see, we've got micropub, which is a spec for letting you post to your site. Um, so that uses the Romy auth to log you in to prove that it is your site. And then we have another endpoint, which is basically just a form post endpoint that you can just post post to, and then, then you make it appear on your site. How you do that is up to you. But we've got, that's the system we've set up for, for clients and servers. So if I use um, a third party site for that, I can then post to my own site. Um, and then if my site is set up right, that can send it out to Twitter and call all these other tools and so on. Good stuff back in. Um, <laughs> so do, do you want to look at micro? Do you want to go back to specs? Sure. Yeah. So that you can. Okay. 
So I mentioned, I mentioned web mentions, which is, 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 is probably the easiest one to add, because you basically just have a header and user service, and you get quite a lot from that. Micropar, but I was just talking about. Um, and these are W3C specs that have, we did with the Social Web Working Group. We built the microformance community work, tested them, then a bunch of us, Tantec, me and Aaron and the others, were there. Um, Micropub. Yeah. Um, Micropub Rocks is a test suite for that. So if you want to build Micropub stuff, we've got things that, that were back and forth between that. The same for, the same for uh, Web Mention, if you want to build Web Mention, there's a, there's a test suite, there's a bunch of tools. Um, there's some tricky stuff because if you're used to receiving web mentioning, incorporating stuff into your site, you've got to be careful about escaping scripts and stuff like that. So we've got some test cases that will send you bad ones so you can go, crap. Um, there's some nuances about web mention, which is you can send, you can update a remote post and then we send the web mention again. So you want to make sure you replace rather than adding. So you don't get 25 copies of the same thing if I'm editing it. Um, and there's a way to delete it as well, where you delete the post and then send a web mention to your dead link that should return 410, and then it knows to delete it. So there's, there's, there's a bunch of nuance in that. Um, why are you in CRUD? These are all done, this is web mention. Oh, this is web mention, okay. Yes. So the, yeah, there's, there's, there's a mod, it's, you know, it's basically, a, a, we're synchronous up between in two points, so you've got to have ways of doing, doing that stuff. But you know, we've, we've done the work and defined how to do it. We've got use cases, examples. We've got code in many cases. Um, so it's not, you know, it's, not a, it's not one of those specs where you think, oh, that would be nice to implement. Oh, how do I do this? It's here's a bunch of code in, in language you're probably using or services, and here's a test suite as well. Because we built, we, we built it first incrementally and then wrote the specs. Or wrote the specs on the wiki and then formalized the specs. OK, back up to specs. Um, so web sub, web sub. Let's do indie auth. We have five minutes left. Okay, so indie auth. So indie auth. Well, indie auth is hard to explain, but yeah, indie auth is, is, the, is the same idea of I link to the other sites. That means I can delegate authorization to those sites. So my primary identity is one is my URL, one of my URLs. I pick that URL, and it will be identified as that. Um, and then you use these these external links to define it. There's indie auth rocks. Ooh. There we go. Yeah, in the orphanet. That's it. It's the spec. It's, it's a W3C spec as well. Can you show me the flow of logging in into one of those sites? Sure. Do, do you want to do that, Tante? Um, use. What do you want to use? Quill? No, you can't use Quill, can you? Because you don't have Micro. Well, let's do. Uh, you can just open a private window and log back to your site. Let's try this. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. When was the last time you logged out? I don't remember. Let me show you failure first. Oh, if you want failure, you can try my site because I have the card but no off. Okay. I'm not Tira, but she's got a button there. So I click that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So basically saying, nope, you can't bring you can't impersonate people. So if you go that, that's good, it's not my site. <laughs> that's true actually. Yes, this is a good point. Always test the negative case first. <laughs> Yeah, and if it works, this is happening visibly in the background. It's going over to GitHub, yeah. fetching the thing, seeing that, and then you're back in there. So basically, all the is doing is going to the website, finding the provider, and then it's just the OAuth pipeline. Um, well, there's 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 a bit more to it. You can implement it yourself as well, but but yeah. There's, you can you can do the auth directly on your own site, and there's examples of how to do that. But you can also delegate it to a, to an external system. 
code I didn't broke has less bugs. So I had to delegate. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's a trade off. But then you yeah. can't always fix the bugs. But yeah, so, so in the login. Um, Yeah, so you can use Indie Login and that will delegate to more places. Um, so it will delegate to Twitter, GitHub, emails, PGP keys. Um, and it can also potentially delegate to another Indie website as well. So my known site is, does that implement Indie Auth? So I could delegate Kevin Marks to come to my known site and log in that way. Good question about that. I see that there is a PGP key option there. If I wanted to add a different kind of system there, for example, the scuttlebutt one. Yeah. What? Sh where should I go to find more information? Here. Yeah. Indie login. Um, Indie login is an open source implementation of Indie auth. Um, you can you can make your own Indie auth. Oh yes, yes. You would. You should definitely read this article. This is what you want. Aaron's spent a lot of time on our auth. Um, and he's, if you want to understand things, he'll explain it to you. Oh yeah, Aperture's a good one as well. <laughs> What's that? You can use, I think Keybase gives you, you can link to your key, right? Then just do this. Link to your key. Yeah. But you can provide an auth provider that does any new authentication system. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can, I mean, the, the point about Indie Auth is it just says where to find your auth authorizer um, and what, what it returns and, and the redirection flow. Yeah, so, you, you know, you can, you can plug your own stuff in or you can delegate it all to someone else. Like, like a written. This way, uh, since you already have an add-on in the browser and the add-on knows this kind of key, I can log into the site. Yep. From injecting some stuff from the add-on. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do clients, I think like that. There's, we've got ways of doing that browser augmentation stuff that we could talk about, but that's. So as an example, Indie Login supports the Indie Auth protocol. Mm -hmm. So you could do your own like SSP login. Yeah, that's what that supported the Indie Auth protocol. And yes. Just like Indie Log, just like Indie Login will do a challenge response with the PGP key. You could do the challenge response with the, uh, yeah. the SSB. So, that's, so if you run the Indie Auth spec, but on the back end it's SSB, and you yeah. prompt it that way and return that, then you, you can make that work, and then it will plug into the Indie Login thing. And it should, and it should work for anyone else who wants Indie Auth, because you, um, you will, you'll have to do a binding between the SSB key and the URL some way on your own way. And that's, I'm using the same thing like rel me, yeah. and I have my hash. Like, yeah. There's no way to verify But, but the, the question we have ver verifying it back is you, you ideally you want to verify it back. You want to allow impersonation. So you may need to have do yeah, need to define a, define a way to publish the, the link the link back in, in SSB. And I don't know how you do that. You you'd link to a SSB yeah, post somehow. Uh, yeah. Um do you wanna go back to the specs again or sure. Uh Web Sub? Web Sub or Microsub? Microsoft is probably better to demo then. Have you, have you got a, one set up? Or? I think so. Okay. So Microsoft is, all these names get a bit confusing. We've got lots of micros and subs and web, webs and whatever. Anyway, Microsoft is for subscribing to other people's feeds. Um, it's a protocol that works between... Publish for posting. Yeah, publish for posting. So, yeah. so web pub is, I want to post stuff. I want my stuff to be published and I don't want people po having to poll me. So it's a, it's a, it used to be called Pub Sub Hubbub. It, it was originally defined around Adam's feeds. Um, it works for, for web things as well. And you basically say, when you post, I will send it to this hub, and the hub will send, manages the subscribers for you and sends them copies. Or we'll sends them links and they fetch it. You can, do both, you can do it both ways. So broadly, that means you can, you can do distributed stuff without polling. Um, but it's a bit more work to set up, you can, and you can always poll it if you want to. Um, micro Sub is a, a, set, a spec for readers. So if you've got something that is receiving, doing the polling for you or receiving the, the web subs, it's a protocol for presenting that between that server and your client so we can write more than one client. So there's two tools for that. Um, there's Aperture, which is a, um, a web sub and feed reading server side thing. And there's um, Monocle, which is the um, Microsub client thing. So have you got an Aperture? Don't take it. We just need to sign in.
Yeah. Okay. So, top right, sign in. So, using any author so that it is this side? Um, I think. So, we find out if you've actually got it or not. So, the way Aperture works is you. Yeah. So, now he's signed in, he can see the sources that he's added to here. Um, so, he's got an indie web channel that has Sunny's Edge, Rosemary, a medium feed, and Ryan, not me. I've, I've taken note of that. <laughs> um, you probably want the known one. <laughs> no, the known one is HTTPS. No, it isn't. No, no, it isn't. Sorry. Okay. So he wants to add that. You can click Find Feeds. Yeah. So I've got three formats of feeds because it's a blog. I've got a microformats feed, which is what he wants because there's a good one, and there are RSS feeds. Um, you may get microformats feeds from some sites that. <laughs> 217 entries. <laughs> um, you, you will sometimes see microformats feeds when you go to WordPress blog, but they may not be right, and you may get less than you get the RSS. It's a trade off. So if, you know, it's a work in progress. We've got to encourage people to get microformats. Um, OK, so now if we go to Monocle, so that's the server side part. Monocle. Oh. Okay. And again, sign in, uses in the auth. Okay, this, this may fail because I'm not sure you've got create. Oh, let's see what happens. I know we're doing. Oh, I think it will still work. It's just you won't be able to post. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got a bunch of channels. If you go to the Indie Web channel, You'll see Rosemary's written a post. Ryan's written a post. Chris has written a post. Would it be correct to say that it's like a feed reader that's not locked into RSS and Apple? Correct. Yes. But it, but it, uses, it supports them too. Um, now, if he had um, the MicroPub stuff enabled, it would also have replies enabled at the bottom of the post as well. Oh. So, we we. Matthew. One of the things I appreciate about this is I was when I put mine up, I was feeling like, oh man, it's really plain, and you guys are just like, oh, it's simple. You know? Yeah. And plain so, is good. It's just, it's, yeah. It, you, you, you can do it more than one way. I'm going to go a little more designy than that. Oh, absolutely. Know, but, yes. <laughs> but I love that you guys just put it up like, hey, here's our simple home on the web, and that's yeah. okay. It's awesome. I, I have people saying to me, I think the CSS didn't load on your site. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's some CSS there, honest. <laughs> you may notice they're in different typefaces. It just looks like it, it changed since 1995. Yeah. OK. Cool. Thank you. Any more questions? No? Okay.